Ladies and welcome to another episode of Going All In, Get the Edge You Need to Succeed. I'm Dr. Erin McKinley, and today we have another awesome spotlight session and second spotlight session with the Franciscan Missionaries of Our Lady University, otherwise known as Fran U, based here in Baton Rouge. I have Dr. Catherine Focke with us to give us an update on their Master's of Science in Nutritional Sciences and Dietetic Internship Program. Check it out. All right, welcome to the podcast, or I should say welcome back to the podcast. So I'm going to turn it right over to you, Dr. Fake, to talk about yourselves and to give us an update on your program. All right. Thank you, Dr. McKinley. And thank you for having us back on your podcast series. Uh, we are here to talk about the Franciscan Missionaries of Our Lady University Master of Science in Nutritional Sciences and Dietetic Internship Program located right here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We wanted to start off with the mission of the program, and that is to educate and form entry-level registered dietitian nutritionists or dietetic practitioners to meet the core competencies for becoming servant leaders in health and wellness. And we do have a concentration in community nutrition, so our graduates are educated in the most rigorous, but individualized and professional, as well as comprehensive manner. So I wanted to start off the podcast today with an introduction to our faculty and staff. We have had some faculty changes uh, and staff changes since uh, we were here last year for episode six. And so my name is Dr. Catherine Fake. I'm the program director. Uh, we have also on the podcast, you'll hear from Ms. Amy Serio. She is our new director of clinical education. And we also have Ms. Sarah Ludwig, who is a registered dietitian, and she supports the program as our academic support coordinator. And I'll hand it over to Ms. Serio, and she'll talk about some fun facts about our program. All right, good afternoon. Like Dr. Fake said, I'm Amy Serio. Um, I come from Our Lady of Lourdes in Lafayette, Louisiana, after about 16 years of working there. Um, most of the time I was clinical and then I was the clinical nutrition manager and I'm super happy to be here and I'm going to go over a little bit about our program and where we're located. Um, we're in the School of Health profession, so this encompasses the physical therapy assistant program, the radiology, radiologic technologists, the respiratory therapists, medical science, medical lab sciences, excuse me, our program, nutritional sciences, the PA program, and also uh, the doctor physical therapy program. And we work with these uh, different disciplines through our simulation lab. We have um, different simulations that we can do with, not only with um, ourselves, but with some of the other disciplines. So a little bit about the program. Um, we can accommodate up to 30 students a year. It is an unpaid internship. It's a full-time hybrid program, so there are online classes along with the rotations. We do follow the academic calendar of the university, so there's time off um, during the course of the program to kind of, you know, uh, recollect yourselves for those who are out of, you know, live out of town and who come here for internship. It gives them a time to go home and be with their family. So the internship is 17 months long and the new cohort starts in August and then they graduate in December of the following year. The total credit hours for the program are 36. 24 of those are didactic and that's 100% online like I mentioned and then 12 of those hours are internship credit hours which um, encompass the rotations and the simulation labs like I talked about in the previous slide. And then there are a bunch of ways to keep in touch or keep track of our program. Um, we have a great um, food and nutrition group that um, keep up with our social media. So you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram. We have a YouTube channel and then our website as well. So the master's portion of the program is uh, combined with the dietetic internship. It satisfies the requirement um, to complete an ASIN accredited supervised practice program in order to sit for the RD exam. So once you um, finish your rotations, you finish out the master's program and then you are able to sit for the exam. 
and effective January 1st, 2024, the minimum degree requirement to be approved for eligibility for the RD exam is gonna change from a, a bachelor's degree to a graduate degree. So our program is already satisfying that requirement. You get both in one, um, one program. And I'll give the mic back over to Dr. Fake. Well, thank you, Amy, for going over our program overview. And again, you can find more information on our website, www.franu.edu. So we wanted to go over some changes uh, that we've made since our podcast last year. And we've had several changes. We've been very, very busy over here at FranU. And as you can probably notice, we've had some faculty changes. And so effective this past August, um, we have a new program director, which is me. Uh, I was the previously the director of clinical education and our um, former program director retired. And so I moved into the program director position in August, but I have been with the program since its inception or actually before its inception um, since around 2015. And again, Mysterio came from Our Lady of Lords with over 15 years of clinical experience and then clinical manager experience. And so she assumed our new role as director of clinical education and she has hit the ground running and she is a phenomenal asset to our team. We will also have some curriculum changes that will go into effect next August, but that will affect the class who is applying to DICAS this um, admission cycle. And so we are changing our curriculum to where the we will offer a new course titled Advanced Methods of Nutrition Assessment. And this will be a two hour face to face course coupled with a two hour lab. And we will work in the lab, um, the simulation lab every single week to cover advanced topics. Um, and hone in on advanced skills like nutrition, focused physical exams, interal, perineral, uh, nutrition support calculations, and just assessing those high risk and critically ill patients in preparation for you to begin your rotation experience. And so with this curriculum change, our students um, will not begin rotations until January of 2023. And so right now, our students begin rotations as soon as the um, program begins, but next year our students will not begin rotations until the spring. And um, they'll rotate from January to uh, November, and you will still have the required number of supervised practice hours you'll need for graduation, and you'll still graduate on time 17 months later the following December. With this change, however, we did re we are looking to reduce the number of supervised practice hours that we have built into the program. Right now, we have about 1,500 hours, and with some new accreditation standards coming out effective next year, we're um, planning to reduce those hours to around 1,200 hours, but still um, very, very adequate for you to have the skills and competencies needed to become an entry-level dietitian. We also have a student scholarship fund available for our dietetic students. And this scholarship is awarded through our Board of Regents and our Franciscan Missionaries of Our Lady, of our Lady um, and the sisters that, are, that oversee um, our health system. And so we've decided that we will offer a $5,000 scholarship to our top four applicants of the program every year, at least for the next three years while we have these scholarship funds available. And so if you are you know, a strong student and you have um, the rankings needed to be at the within the top four of our um, applicant pool, then you will have a chance to get a $5,000 scholarship, which roughly pays for about a fourth of your tuition. So um, really great scholarship opportunity that we're excited to offer our students. Another exciting thing coming to Fran U is the construction of St. Francis Hall. And so if you've driven by Fran U or Our Lady of the Lake within the last couple of weeks, um, we, there was an administration building that was demolished to make way for this state-of-the-art 
two-story simulated environment teaching hospital. And in this hospital, we'll have a dedicated nutrition skills lab where we'll be working in the lab every single week. Um, we'll be working with other disciplines and interprofessionals collaborating to complete the plan of care for patients. And um, we also are excited to offer um, metabolic court training for critically ill patients as well as um, clients or patients that we can assess for perhaps sports nutrition purposes to estimate their energy needs. So really exciting things happening at Brain U right now. One other thing we wanted to mention that happened since last year is that our dietetic internship program is now fully accredited through the Accreditation Council for Education and Nutrition and Dietetics. We received that full accreditation status this past January after a self-study and site visit, and we are fully accredited now for the next seven years. Okay, so now that Dr. Bakke has talked about What's new at Brand New? I'm going to give you a little bit of information about why you should choose Brand New. So we are a mission-centered university focused on forming faith-filled servant leaders. So for myself, coming from um, a division of our system that Brand New is associated with, that's um, that was a big appeal to me because mission is very important. Um, service leader, servant leadership is something that I've. Um, Honed in on, honed in on, excuse me, as a leader at Our Lady of Lords, and I really wanted to come here and, and um, be able to offer that to our students as well, or be a part of that. In addition to that, we um, have had 100% first year pass rate within six months, and our last um, group, I think, did they finished quicker, Dr. Fake. This was the last group that graduated in uh, this past December. They had all passed within six months of completion. So by June. So, and like I mentioned, um, we are affiliated with the larger health system, which is Franciscan Missionaries of Our Lady. So we have um, Our Lady of the Lake Hospital in Baton Rouge, Our Lady of Lourdes in Lafayette, St. Francis in Monroe. So it just gives this you as an intern, the opportunity to be at different locations, to be part of a health system, which offers a multitude of different opportunities and opportunities to work with um, other professionals and other disciplines. All the rotations are planned for the interns. And like I mentioned, many opportunities for interprofessional collaboration. And we're constantly looking at new sites and meeting with new preceptors. So there may be you know, other opportunities as we continue to grow. So our online courses meet quality matters requirements. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with that, it's sort of like an accrediting board or best practice for online courses. The master's degree meets the 2024 accreditation requirements for entry level dietitians. We also have students that have been recognized at local, state and national levels. So like at the LAN conference or FINCI, we have students that have gotten scholarships. So in addition to the scholarship that um, Dr. Fake mentioned, we have highly educated and skilled faculty and staff who maintain practice days within um, two of them. Dr. Fake and Ms. Ludwig work at Our Lady of the Lake for one practice day a week. And then I'll be joining Our Lady of Lords in Lafayette next year. We also have opportunities for on-campus involvement and leadership through the Franciscan Nutrition Association, and other associations, student government, campus ministry, different things. And then again, the scholarships that we um, offer and the new scholarship. So our website again is www.frameu.edu backslash MSNS. And I'm not gonna go through all these names again and contact information, but um, Dr. McKinley will have that information if you so need it. All right, thank you for that overview and for the updates on your program. I'm going to jump into a different five set of five questions that I ask the programs that come back on the podcast for a second spotlight session. And the first is, what is one major improvement to the program that was born out of the COVID-19 pandemic? So the COVID-19 pandemic certainly presented everybody with challenges, specifically pertaining to education and internship rotations because we you know had um, to pull our students out of 
all of the clinical sites because uh, none of our rotations were allowing students with the stay at home order. But something beautiful that came out of this whole pandemic situation was just the, um, I guess the easy easiness of transitioning to that virtual environment. We as faculty were already um, prepared to teach our students in that virtual environment because we had that online master's program built into our program. And so like Ms. Ariel said, our, um, our classes are Quality Matter certified, as well as the faculty who teach them are Quality Matter certified. And so our transition was very simple in just pivoting from that face-to-face -face environment to that virtual environment. And um, the beauty of that was that there was not a lot of hiccups and it was a very easy transition for our students. They did not um, really get disrupted in a, in a huge way other than just being pulled out of rotations for a couple months, but they did end up um, following, you know, back up with rotations and they ended up graduating on time, time in December. It did not disrupt anything and as far as their timeline. But um, for example, uh, when we did go back in person, it was during the summer, we had a simulation on ethics. So every summer we, the students take a class in ethics and we have an ethics simulation um, that pertains to an end of life scenario. And at the last minute, the ethics moderator, their professor was not able to attend in person. And so we actually, at the last minute, switched that simulation to a virtual simulation and it ran its course and it was beautiful. And had we not been adapting and trained to present in that virtual environment and be quality matter certified, um, I think it would have been very difficult. Um, but in to this day, we do a lot of hybrid uh, classes where some classes we'll do face-to-face, -face, some classes we do online. Um, and it allowed our program to be a lot more flexible, actually. And we were able to utilize a lot of the resources that we already had in place. All right, looking ahead, what does your ideal class of interns look like as far as characteristics, qualities, different personalities, and experiences they might bring? Yeah, Dr. McKinley, that's a great question. So some of the qualities that we look for in our applicants and our current students are that they're passionate about nutrition and dietetics. They're passionate about this career. They're passionate about this program. Um, they're driven. They're organized. Um, they're diligent. You know, this is a very uh, rigorous program, as we mentioned, it's in our mission statement. So you students need to be diligent, they need to be organized, and they need to be passionate. We also look for students who are advocates for not only the profession, but for our program and for the university. We want our students to be proud of this program. We want our students to go out in the community and represent this program well and represent the university. And not only the university, but the larger, the bigger picture, the Franciscan missionaries of Our Lady Health System picture. Uh, and so we want them to be advocates for that. Some personalities that um, we really like to see in our students are for our students to be confident yet humble. You know, and then we also, of course, want our students to be uh, respectful of not only their peers, but their professors and their preceptors. But most importantly, to display all of the five core values of the FMOL health system, um, which we instill in not only every student that comes into our program, but also our employees of the health system. Um, and those five core values are justice, humility, reverence and love for all of life, joyfulness of spirit, and service. Right. So kind of following along with that, what are you doing to diversify your interns in each class? So a couple of things that are currently in place. Um, we are a private institution, so I know that can cause people to be a little bit fearful of applying, you know, for financial reasons. So we offer um, a scholarship, like Dr. Fake said, to our top four applicants. 
and we don't charge out of state tuition. So hopefully that can appeal to more individuals. Um, we are a Catholic institution, but our mission statement is to serve, to build cath excuse me servant leaders from all faiths. So we don't we're not exclusively you know recruiting Catholic students. We're recruiting students of all faiths. Um, but we want to grow servant leaders of all faiths. We also want our internship to stay geographically diverse. So we currently have two students. Well, actually, we have three students from California, and over the last couple of cohorts, we've had at least two. So we've also had students from Florida, Alabama, Arkansas, Ohio. And this helps to me to expand the cultural boundaries that we have by bringing those people into our Cajun culture with all of its food mainstays and the challenges of obesity in our state. Um, but also those students bring their culture and their food landscape to us. So this can allow for the interns and the faculty to maybe reevaluate how we think about nutrition assessments or client education and recommendations. Um, we also want to include individuals who maybe went to school for nutrition and their focus was maybe wellness or community and they didn't have that clinical piece. And they can come to our university and get the, their clinical background completed and then join the program. So right now we have a student who is in our master's program and her undergrad was focused more on wellness, but she's taking our master's program and getting the other required classes she needs to be able to eventually apply for the internship. And then the last thing I think for me, um, I've had the advantage of working with a lot of different interns from a lot of different internships through my clinical experience at Our Lady of Lourdes. So um, I've been able to reach out and make some connections again with those students, um, especially a couple of students who have gone to undergrad programs that are historically minority. So me making those connections um, allows me to reach out to different programs and promote brand new, you know, maybe universities that have never, you know, been um, familiar with our program and what we have to offer. All right. So how are you implementing or planning to implement diversity, equity, and inclusion information into the program for improved patient or client care experiences for the interns? So I'll kind of um, answer this question as well, because um, I've done a little bit of extra training um, since I've got, gotten started with this position. Um, but as a department, we've um, been part of diversity, equity, and inclusion education sponsored by the university at semester faculty events. And we've also been asked to contribute information and learning activities to a new diversity work group and service learning committee on campus. And then um, on the individual level, I've completed a course called Brave and Bold Dialogue, and it's about um, diversity and equity on the collegiate level. And also um, a course called, through the um, Dairy Max, through the Dairy Association, it was a three-day symposium, and we learned all about how to um, incorporate diversity and equity into uh, the hospital or the, the clinical setting and how just to better um, unite people and to be more accepting of different individuals. So um, those kind of things we're working on to, uh, I'm kind of honing in on those to contribute and make some materials for the students as we go. Um, and we'll continue to grow with the university and their programs as well. And then we're also looking at a simulation lab to um, incorporate some diversity and equity training as well. All right, well, that segues really well into my last question of other than the skills that the interns acquire through the required CRDNs, what other skills-based training are you currently implementing or planning to implement in the future? So that's a great question, Dr. McKinley. Um, other than the required CRDNs that internships have to do, um, we have implemented this semester a workshop. Uh, we actually are implementing it this Friday uh, um, that prepares students who are about to graduate to enter the workforce and to apply for entry-level positions. And so we are honing in on skills for resume writing and resume building. We're honing in on skills on negotiating a salary 
interviewing practices, um, and then how to just apply for not only a job and to get an interview and to negotiate that salary, but what are the requirements to become licensed? What are the requirements to become registered? What are the steps to take to ensure that you maintain your license and registration? So um, those things are really important. And that actually came at the request of former students of ours through our program assessment process. We've incorporated uh, these trainings. And um, one other skill that I do want to mention that we focus on aside from the CRDNs is that our students at the completion of this program have the skill set to become servant leaders in health and wellness. And that is part of our mission statement. And so we don't just strive for our students to be of service to the community, but be of a servant leadership and servant leader. And so through our service learning project and other activities that we have on campus, our students um, form that foundation to become a servant leader in health and wellness. And then after they graduate, contribute that to their own community in their own special way. All right, well, that was all of the questions that I had for today. So I would love to close out this episode with a take home message from each of you to potential applicants. Um, my take home message, I think, would be to just be open to a program like ours. It may be a program that you are unfamiliar with. It may be um, not a program that's, you know, one of the bigger programs out there that you may have heard of, but um, just give our program an opportunity. We are, like we talked about, um, building service le servant leaders, and we are mission focused, and I think that's what sets us apart. Um, and yeah, I think that's going to be my takeaway for today. Yeah, my takeaway is similar. Um, so my takeaway message is for you to um, come explore our pro program, see what's new at Free and You, see what all we have to offer, see the really exciting things that are coming your way, and um, just go explore our website and reach out to us if you have any other uh, questions, want to come visit us on campus. Um, we'd be ha more than happy to accommodate a private tour and private visit for you. So um, please don't hesitate to just reach out and explore our program. Thank you, Catherine and Amy, for joining me on this episode. And for those at home who would like some more information on the program at FranU, check out episode six of this podcast, and then check out their website that I've linked for you in the description below this video. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode with another awesome dietetic internship. And we'll see you next time. Bye.